Aloha guys, Stupid Chris here. Now, two days ago, I went to a different area. It was a cliff area with a reef bench in front. I used my rig here with the, with the Makaira spinner on it. Uh, within about an hour, hour 20 minutes, I had a huge knockdown. And it kept stripping line and I would stop it, bring it in, it would go out, stop it, bring it in, go out. I kind of knew what it was. It, it felt like I possibly had a decent GT on, but you know, there's no way I can prove it, right? But first I want to show that, look, the GT knot that I did a while back held. The line didn't put anything. That held. It just took a bind, the monofilament to the braid. Now, the bad part is all of this braid here, I mean the mono, see all the mono here, all eight, nine feet of it is shredded. Problem two is that a lot of this line, about maybe 15, 12, 15 uh, yards of this line is all chipped up badly, but the line held. So that area had a different type of topography. I wasn't casting high and looking down. I was at wave level and there was cliffs, there were, there were plateaus, we plateaus in 10, 12 feet of water, it was going up, down, up, down, so the, I can tell the fish would hold up somewhere. I waited out and I'll zoom to another one. Okay. Uh, unfortunately, the salt spray did some damage to one of my cameras, so I couldn't use it that day either. Um, it, it just everything went wrong. I, I actually had to dump one of my backup cameras. But instead of um, looking at it negatively, I, I figure. Um, because of the damage that was done, I'm going to I'm gonna do one of two things. I'm either going to take this line off, this braid, and store it on my um, spare spool, or I'm going to use my um, fish-on spooler here, and what, I'm gonna, uh, what I think I'm, I'm, most, I'm just going to throw it away right now. I don't know how much of the line was damaged or how much I have to cut off. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to throw it out. So uh, this is um, the, the, the spool that it came with that you can take, strip the line off. Problem is, is that if you if you um, strip the line off, the line's gonna be so tight in this, it's gonna be hard to pull it off. Um, so I found just using a piece of paper and you wrap it around this part here. And what's gonna happen is that when you start spooling, it's just gonna wrap itself tight around this and it'll be easy to pop this off, pull the line out. So that would solve that problem. So above me is the original box. It has the uh, secondary spool that I picked up and that has 65 pound braid main line. Uh, this one that I have here is 50 pound uh, main line. So what I plan to do is I'm gonna use the backup spool in the areas of sandy areas to boulders, um, areas that I don't have to worry about the break too much. I'm going to hold on to that. And this one here, uh, I'm just going to take the whole thing off and I'm going to put on 30 pound mono instead. Okay, that's what it looks like. There you go. See the the, the paper I put around the spool is in there, it makes it slide out easier. There you go. All right, when you look up what this reel can hold, 30 pound monofilament. It can that's 30 pound test mono. It can hold 330 yards of 0 0.55. That is the line diameter. And right here is Ultra Premium Mono. This is by Soft Steel. Ultra Premium Mono. This is the good stuff. 30 pound. This is 1100 yard spool. 0 0.55 diameter. So this is correct. Now, it doesn't matter 
really who makes the line or what company or what reel is going into. I found throughout the years, whenever I spooled my own reels for trolling, jigging, plugging, anything, when they tell you it's going to be 330 yards or 30 pounds, take 10% off because that's when the spool is filled, I mean, tightly filled right up to the top, which I rarely do because you can see here you got that little lip that's about an eighth of an inch here or even less than that. That's filled right up to the top. I don't do that. Okay, so basically a conservative point would be roughly around 290 to 300 yards of 30 pounds. That's being conservative, but even then, I kind of draw back on it because I like to leave uh, a little bit more than an eighth of an inch off the lip. All right, I made a uni knot with five wraps. That's all I'm going to need. See here? Made a uni knot with five wraps. And so let's start. So when you put this on, see it, it's just rolling back and forth right now. You gotta wait for the click click sound. Uh, let's see if I can get that thing to click. Still not clicking. Why isn't it clicking? Okay. There. That is what you want. Now it's well seated and you can put the cap back on. Okay, to get this dialed in again, um, um, I got it back to roughly where it was, but I got to fine tune it. I was using seven instead of 10 or five. I'm using seven because like seven is easy to remember. So, let me see. It's at zero right now. See, very loose. All right, so I'll dial it to number seven. Kind of loose yet, so go back, tighten it by one click, go back to seven, pull it, ooh, almost there, almost there, go back, tighten it by one click, one click to the right, dial it back to seven again, bingo, that's what I want, so make sure you, you get the dial back. Looks all good again. So this time we're going to be trying 30 mono instead of 50 braid. Uh, difference being is that with the 50 pound braid, I probably got more line on it compared to the 30 mono because of the diameter of the line. Uh, the plus with the the plus with the um, mon, uh, with the braid is I got more lineage on it, and because of less wind resistance because the line was thinner, I was be, I was able to cast that line up pretty good. With the 30 pound mono, I'm going to have less line on the spool because the light is thicker and because of the thickness I'm not going to get quite the yardage I did on my cast with the braid but it's a give and take so let's see how this works 